Hey. The act of reading has changed for me as of late, as I suspect it has for many of today's readers. When it comes to a novel, I'm never just reading the book anymore. Instead, I branch out as I read, and like to follow references and research context as I go. It takes more time. A simple, single-pronged reading project soon presents all these tangents and asides as I buzz and bounce around from each. I'm a fly who's only too happy to get caught up in this web of complex text. Here's a recent example of this phenomenon that I experienced as I was reading Don Quixote. Miguel de Cervantes is the great Spanish writer from the end of the 16th century. We don't know everything about his life, but he lived in poverty, served in the military, and was badly wounded. He was captured by pirates, imprisoned for five years, and ransomed back to Spain. His famous Don Quixote might be the first modern novel, and it is one of the supreme masterpieces of world literature. It is tremendously influential and continues to be alluded to and revisited in pop culture today. In 2019, I was familiar with Cervantes by name and reputation, but hadn't actually read anything by him. It was actually the announcement of an upcoming novel by Salman Rushdie that pulled me right down into the web. Rushdie had written about Cervantes before, alluding to his work back in 1995's The Moor's Last Sigh, and in an introduction he penned in 2015, and I'd faked my way through both of these without knowing exactly what he was writing about. But when it was announced that his upcoming novel was going to be a sort of retelling of Cervantes' great Don Quixote, I figured I couldn't fake it anymore, and it was time to read the real deal. When reading a translation to English, I like to be pretty careful when it comes to selecting the right edition. But after just a few minutes of researching the options, it was clear that 2003's translation of Don Quixote by Edith Grossman was the only way to go. So, I secured myself a copy. At over a thousand pages, this beast was going to take me a while to tame, so I started to pick my way through it. Some advice for anyone attempting to read this novel. Go slow. Savor it. Don't power through. I saw a video of a young reader online who stated that they read the entire thing in nine days. That's an impressive feat of dedication, but I don't advise it. Don Quixote is an episodic novel. I believe it reads best when you take your time with it. Read four or five chapters and then put it down. Let it breathe. Pick it back up a few days later and work through a little more. I like to imagine that's how many of Cervantes' original readers made their way through the initial release after it was first published in 1605. They might have gathered as a family in the evening when time permitted to share in another episode of their favorite errant knight and his squire Sancho Panza. In addition to being episodic, there are a few grindy bits in this novel, especially in the digressions towards the end of Part 1. Cervantes himself took a 10-year break between releasing Part 1 and Part 2, so I'd advise first-time readers to take an extended break at this point to help echo that and recharge before jumping into Part 2. As I was approaching the end of the novel, I started to look for adaptations in other media. I found the 2000 made-for-TV movie from TNT starring John Lithgow and watched that. It features some pretty solid performances by Lithgow and Bob Hoskins, but the writing falters at times, and the special effects do not hold up well. This search also led me to learn about the absurd struggle filmmaker Terry Gilliam went through to bring his film The Man Who Killed Don Quixote to life. If you're unaware of the troubled story around the history of this infamous 2018 film, it's worth looking into, as the legend around it is pretty interesting. So I capped off my reading of the text by viewing this film too. Adam Driver's performance is fantastic here, and I really enjoyed this movie. Next, I found out about Rob Davis's 2013 graphic novel from Self Made Hero, so I got that and tore through it. The artwork in this edition is fantastic, and Davis's script has great comedic timing that helps accentuate the humor. Of all the adaptations of Don Quixote I checked out, this comic book was by far the best of them. While reading Cervantes' great novel, I also took a peek at the many related and more contemporary novels around it. I learned that Madame Bovary and Dostoevsky's The Idiot were indebted to the novel, but decided on Graham Greene's 1982 novel Monsignor Quixote instead. It was a fresh take on the original, and I enjoyed reading it. Then I learned about another made-for-TV movie based on Greene's novel starring Sir Alec Guinness, so I watched that too. Monsignor Quixote was released as a film in 1987, and is a faithful adaptation of Green's novel. It's a buddy road trip movie where the modern analogues to Don Quixote and Sancho Panza travel around Spain while discussing faith in terms of religion and politics. By this time, I figured I was ready for Salman Rushdie's Quixote, 
which had now long since been released. I jumped in and enjoyed it right away. Rushdie has many clever references to Don Quixote threaded into his book. I think it'd actually stand up on its own just fine without any of that preliminary reading, but the added context only enriched my enjoyment of this great novel. One thing I appreciate about Rushdie's work is his desire to explore new topics, which brings an immediacy to his writing, even if it's referencing a 400-year-old Spanish story. In this one, he discusses the current opioid crisis, and I found its treatment of the topic very informative. Rushdie brilliantly explores the ever more flexible line between fiction and truth, and also parallels the meta-layers that featured in Cervantes' original. There's also an intertextual quality to his work, and the narrative will suggest other texts you might explore. Two brief texts should be mentioned here. To pick up everything Rushdie is putting down, I'd advise readers to be familiar with two specific short stories. The first is The Nine Billion Names of God by Arthur C. Clarke. Now, I was already intimately familiar with this 1953 science fiction narrative because many years ago I read in an interview where Rushdie cited this particular story as one that really impacted him as a young reader. Since then, I'd made a comprehensive study of it, so I immediately picked up his references to it in Quichotte. But, in the novel, he also mentions a recently released film adaptation of the story. After some research, I learned that this was a real thing, so I hunted it down and watched the fantastic 2018 15-minute short film by Dominique Philhole. The second short story is called Pictures Don't Lie by Catherine McLean. I was not familiar with this 1951 short story before reading Quichotte, but when it came up in the novel, I stopped reading and immediately sought this one out. While reading it, I also learned that it had been adapted into a comic in 1952 in an issue of Weird Science from EC Comics, so I tracked that down and read it too. This ended up being an all-encompassing endeavor. For nearly two years, this particular reading project shaped my thinking as I had Cervantes' broken and delusional night and everything he represents in the middle ground of my mind the whole time. I started out simply wanting to read the new Rushdie novel. That sent me back 400 years to the great Don Quixote, then to the 1980s to another novel by Graham Greene. Then I read a graphic novel, I watched three films, one short film, and two short stories, all after simply deciding I was going to read Quichotte. During that time, I came across innumerable references to Cervantes and his Quixote, to the point where I'm sure I was annoying members of my family or colleagues at work. Hey, that's just like Don Quixote. Have I told you about Don Quixote? I was a little obsessed. And I guess that obsession illustrates how reading has changed for me. Instead of a single-pronged reading project, now it often becomes an expanding web of biography, historical context, adaptation, critical analysis, and related media texts. I didn't always have the patience or means to explore the rich content and context that emanated out from what I chose to read, but now that I do, I recognize that it makes for a more engaging and immersive reading experience. This was especially true for me when it came to the great Don Quixote. His head is stuffed full of enchantments. The books have unhinged him, to put it mildly. Battles and challenges, fables and fantastical tales, poisoned his mind. Although he loves his books. The more he loves them, the more he must be parted from them. 